We fit it on the Superior Engineering Superflex sway bar assembly front and rear. Keeping in mind, this doesn't have disconnects anymore. These sway bars are fully connected. Now for this video demonstration, we've left the shock absorbers off. So we're gonna get a really big amount of flex here. Normally you wouldn't do this, you'd have actually shock absorbers in. So we're just gonna do this to show you really how much you're gonna get out of this in flex. What we'll do, we'll bring the forklift in, we'll lift up the back corner, we'll get this thing to twist up and we'll get a couple of measurements. You wanna come in, Luke? Kick up. Is that it? Go down a little bit. Up. Okay, so we've got it up to the height where the wheel was almost off the ground. It's right. 15.50 there now, it's getting up there. Go around the back corner. If you can come around here and just have a look at this sway bar, you'll get a bit more of an understanding of what we are talking about before. As you can see now, that sway bar, because it's so long, it's a lot more horizontal. It's basically almost following the same angle as a lower control arm, whereas a factory sway bar would have been up like that. With no shock absorbers, the sway bar would have been basically going almost straight up and down, and that would have really been limiting the down travel. So you can see it's a huge difference. So we've got sway bar still fully connected both ends. Okay, so I've got my measurements. What I'll do now, I'll go inside. We'll put these measurements into the computer. We'll pull up the graph and then we'll go in and have a look. Do you want to bring that down? Just before we're going to put this car down, I thought we'd show the, the viewers a big benefit with these sort of sway bars. If you can get that on camera there, you'd notice these sway bars, because they're, they're a lot longer here now, they're actually hardly twisting. If you were to look at a factory sway bar, because they're so short, they'd be really twisting up, opposing each other, and that really strains the sway bar. The, these, even though they're a bigger sway bar, they're heavier, they're longer, they're not getting stressed as much as these little standard OE ones, but you're getting as good off-road cornering ability and all that running these, so it's great, but you've just got the additional flex. You could probably even see it on the rear if you might be able to get a camera in there to have a look at that as well. Okay, so we've done a graph up for the viewers to have a look, so we'll go in there and we'll have a look at that. So I've got Greg here on the computer. He's been doing the data here in the background while we're doing the work out there in the workshop. He's knocked together this nice little graph to make it a bit more understanding. So what we've basically got on the front, we've got OE sway bars when they were fitted. Greg showing the front flex, the rear flex, and then the total flex front and rear. So as you can see, he's basically plotted those in to give you a starting point. And obviously the one that you would expect the most, which is green. Single super flex arm, no sway bars, and you expect that's where it's got to be the maximum flex, and that's what it is. And we're not trying to dis dispute that in any way. We're just trying to show that a series of different things you can do will give you a different amount of flex. So what we're showing here is you can fit a Superior Engineering Superflex sway bar assembly on it and just be a little bit behind in flex, but you can have great road manners. If you want any more information on these great products, jump on Fall Drive TV's website for more information.